Welcome to the first issue of UniVid, a quarterly video about what's going on here at Unisys New Zealand. The idea is to have a different person in front of the camera each time. My name's Trent and this is my 15 minutes of fame. Let's go. In each program we'll be looking at three major stories all to do with the Unisys three-legged stool. The first one's going to be about reputation, the second about customers, and the third one about ourselves, the people of Unisys. Today's first main story is about a product which is already doing extraordinary things for Unisys's worldwide reputation as a leader in business technology, the ES7000. Well, I guess it's the most exciting product that we've had in many a year. Well, until now, the, a client hasn't had a competitive offering. The ES7000 brings us into one open platform for the first time. The main people story is about our Christchurch officer's big shift. I headed off to Wellington for the day <laughs> and left it up to everyone else to do all the hard work. And the customer story is about a potentially huge job for a new client. It's not often that the opportunity comes along to really do global work with a big player, um, particularly out of a small subsidiary down in the bottom of the world. But first, let's go to Paula Drew, who's at our Nauranga office. A big potential contract for Unisys is under negotiation, the outsourcing of Clear's internal IT infrastructure. The agreement, which will probably take about three months to conclude, will include computer operations, technical support, local area network administration and support, and operations management. Won't include running Clear's internet site, ClearNet, or any of their other online products. While the initial contract won't be huge, if we do our job well, a significant opportunity exists. Trent now has the lowdown on a major contract that's about to be signed. To upgrade the police computer system from the current OS2 environment to Windows NT single integrated enterprise environment, advantages to police include a more stable and manageable computer system, lower costs and better services. Unisys will be providing a total solution liaising with police at all levels, from the National Systems Management Centre down to individual police stations. Supermarket operators Foodstuffs is one of Unisys's major commercial clients, spending four to six million dollars a year on project work over the past three years and over a million dollars a year on support services. In May of this year, Foodstuffs started implementing Mars, the Unisys developed merchandising and retail support system. The system, which manages order forecasting, warehouse stock requirements, and order fulfillment for each of its stores, will make Foodstuffs operations more efficient and profitable. In the next couple of months, Unisys payroll will be managed out of the Sydney Shared Centre, the SSC. The change is part of the Asia-Pacific centralisation strategy. It will make no difference to us except for a new style payslip. And of course, these will now be called payslips. <laughs> Finally in the news, we've all heard of ISPs, Internet Service Providers, but what about ASPs? ASP stands for Application Service Provider basically providing computer services over the internet or via a private network. The advantage for users, especially small and mid-sized companies, is that they don't have to invest in big computers or software, they just pay per play for what they need. Unisys is about to launch itself into the ASP market, so watch this space. And that's the Unisys News in Brief. Now here's the first of our main stories. The ES7000 is the first Wintel mainframe and Unisys is bringing it to the marketplace using all the experience we've got in the mainframe areas and bringing it into an open, affordable platform for our customers. Well I guess it's the most exciting product that we've had in many a year. We've looked at the way in which we want to take this to market so that we capture each opportunity as best we can. It's going to allow clients to take their distributed NT or Windows environment into the glass house and at last get control of that NT environment. Unisys seeks to turn servers into mainframes. The ES7000 is aimed at the mid-range market, traditionally where the Unix players were, but more and more of our customers are looking to take the NT applications up into that mid-range and want a reliable, scalable platform for that that they can rely on. But hence our partnership with Microsoft and Intel taking those servers up into that mid-range market. Over the last few years, clients have ended up with hundreds, sometimes thousands, of distributed NT systems. And that's caused them real problems with control and uh, runaway costs. Now we've got a technology where they can consolidate all those servers, bring them into one environment, 
and get their corporate hands around it and start delivering better power for less money. So we're going to see it in the e-business market, we'll see it in the consolidation market, something our, a lot of our customers are looking at right now. And that's where we would go for what we consider to be our low-hanging fruit, i.e. the logical opportunities that we can, we have a relationship and we can develop that further along the lines with the ES 7000. There's a huge mindset here and perhaps that's the most difficult part of the sale, is to convince a client to abandon, say, a Sun Solaris ethic and to adopt a Windows 2000 ethic and say, I'm now going to bet my whole business on Bill Gates and Windows 2000. And that's where it really isn't a technology-led sale, but more a hearts and minds-led sale. It's great to see a Wintel machine that can perform like a mainframe, but at a fraction of the price. We'll see this competing both against the um, low-end 8x servers from Hewlett-Packard, Dell, Compaq, our usual competitors, but it'll also compete in the higher end against, in the Unix market. Up against Sun, the E10000 is probably the only comparable box on the market these days, and it's less than one-third of the cost of that box. If we take, for example, Sun in the marketplace, the product that we're competing with, in the last two years they've only sold four. Now, you can be rest assured that our targets for the ES7000 is far more aggressive than four. We've ordered an ES7000, we're awaiting the delivery of it, we've set up and are beginning to establish a centre of excellence. The ES7000 will be our lead product from our ES server range. It's a platform that takes care of some legacy applications or legacy systems and moves them forward into a new environment as well. And to do that, Unisys has said, OK, we've got to run multiple operating systems simultaneously inside one box. So therefore, you're able to run NT4, Windows 2000 Advanced Server, Data Centre in the future when it's released, right along in the same box with Unixware. What we have to achieve now, the challenge for us all, is achieving market leadership. It's got a known roadmap ahead of it, and it's got a real great future ahead of it, and it's just starting. The second major story in this edition of Univid is about our Christchurch offices shift from Beely Ave to Kilmore Street. The big move happened last month. For the company it's a sign of commitment to our South Island customers. Well we've recently moved building from the old Unisys premises on Beely Avenue uh, down here to our great new mod version here on uh, Kilmore Street so that's as opposed to kill less we're going to kill more business down here. And uh, the old premises, we've been in there for about 30 years, and it was old, tired. We weren't together, we were spread around the place, so we needed something new and fresh. Well, when it came to the actual moving day, I organised that really well, so I headed off to Wellington for the day <laughs> and left it up to everyone else to do all the hard work. And then the team got stuck in and um, loaded everything up into cartons. Stuart Robinson from Wellington had been down for the week, so he pitched in and we uh, moved over the weekend. The uh, systems people have everything switched on in the new premises on the Monday morning, so it went really smoothly, but yeah, there's a fair bit of hard work done as well. Oh, I think it's great here. There's uh, plenty of light in the place, uh, lots of sunshine, uh, nice and fresh new premises, new furniture, excellent. Love it. We like having new professional boardroom and presentation rooms, so it's a lot more swept up than the old premises. As you probably heard from other colleagues, it's a really good, bright environment, which is a heck of an improvement on our previous site. We're really close to our customers. Pine Gould Corporation is literally a stone's throw away. AMI is just a walk around the road, so it's great to be a lot closer to our primary customers here in Christchurch, and also just close to the city centre. It's a lot more vibrant work area to uh, business area to be in. We've got a lot more space than we had in the other place, a lot more useful space. Our workshop's all light and bright and sunny. It's great. So yeah, it's a nice new location. Still on staff, Vernon McClellan retired recently after 38 years with Unisys. For the younger staff members, like me, you're right in suspecting that computers weren't actually invented that long ago. I've been told that in 1962, Unisys employees used to count on their hands. It's true. The most notable change that I think is the, the way the size of mainframes have reduced from the days when they took up a whole computer room to now it's no bigger than a PC. The most amusing moment I think is back when I was teaching mainland Chinese in, in the States and they spent four months at the Washington State University learning English, the American style, 
And when I taught them, within two days they had a Kiwi accent. And when it came back to you, it sounded real funny. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I'm looking forward to most is get away and stop working and just travel around in our motor home and see as much of the country and as much of Australia as, Australia as we possibly can. You're off across the ditch, are you? Yes, and I take the camper across the ditch and travel around there for 12 months. Okay. Best of luck to you. Hope it all goes well. Thank you. And that brings us to our final story of this program. By now we are all quite aware of the telephone banking phenomena. You dial up and press some buttons and next thing you've completed your banking while avoiding all the hustle and bustle of the queue. The fancy term for this technology is Interactive Voice Response, or IVR. Unisys is currently involved with the revamp of the IVR system for the BNZ. Obviously at the beginning we were after a, a global partner really moving this project out of New Zealand into other regions. So they wanted a company who could uh, put people on the ground in all of their sites worldwide for their supply, the maintenance, enhancement of all the IVR systems. We were up against some pretty impressive competition including British Telecom and Comtech and people who done IVR systems for the Olympic Games and, and we won that. Certainly this project started um, as as a project that would form the basis for a global IVR application that would be deployed globally. And we're positioning very well to be able to deliver a number of those projects in the call centre, IVR, CTI arena, right across the board. For transfer funds, press 2. For bill payments, press 3. For automatic payments, press It's not often that the opportunity comes along to really do global work with a big player, um, particularly out of a small subsidiary down in the bottom of the world. Unisys is responsible for upgrading our current IVR application and um, also upgrading the hardware on which it sits. It actually is part of a, a broader BNZ project um, which is looking at upgrading all of our IVR and call centre capacity in New Zealand. Here's an opportunity locally to really make a difference, make a mark and from that springboard off uh, to the good, for the good of the, the wider Unisys. Uh, there'll be opportunities here for Unisys all over the world. There's certainly an expectation that as we move forward that the um, customers will move into electronic channels more heavily. So we need to upgrade our capacity in both the IVR technically and also our call centre capability with our, our customer service representatives themselves. We started work in October last year with a detailed design, the planning, looking at all the call flows and recording all the voices that, that you hear. Uh, the system should go live at the end of June, which will be a major milestone. I guess the thing that really fundamentally challenged us with this one was the timeline. Um, it's part of a bigger project for National Australia Bank, but the BNZ have a very tactical need here to roll onto a new platform. It's certainly been a developing relationship with us. It hasn't always been easy. Um, and, but we have developed a very close bond and I think that the team works very well together and certainly I have um, very regular contact with, with the Unisys project manager and development manager and having the team on site is very important in terms of building team dynamics. A really key part of this project is the partnership relationship. Um, that means that we're working with them and planning these new enhancements. They expect us to bring ideas to the table, they expect us to apply expertise from New Zealand and overseas. And we've used resources from all around Unisys. We've used people from Pat Duggan's area in uh, system integration. Uh, the operational support people have been integrally involved with this as a project. Um, we've used people from Unisys Australia on the BNZ project um, and we've even brought in contractors uh, from as far away as the US to help us deliver this so that we really make a success of it up front uh, and as a means to springboarding onto other things. For Manawatu Wanganui Regional Council rates press 2. The spin-off from future projects will be huge. Um, we will take the existing application here in New Zealand onto all their sites worldwide, building in a whole lot of new functionality. Uh, we're working with them on enhancing that for speech recognition, which is a new and exciting way of interacting with the telephone. Also working with the NAB on CTI and a whole lot of other call centre um, opportunities. For example, there's an opportunity in the, in the UK. They plan to build a complete new call centre um, this year and we have the opportunity to help them implement that. The bank sees us and values us because we have specific domain knowledge, because we've got global reach and local depth within that domain, um, and see us not as a, as a threat or not as a used car salesman uh, coming to try and bang down the door, um, but as, as an organisation that understands where they're going and has a capability to meet their specific needs. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, and this is the first edition of Univid. The program's going to be back in another few months. I've had a great time, I hope you have too. 
see you around. So if you've got any ideas or suggestions for future editions of Univind, please drop us a line, we'd love to hear from you. Until then, we'll see you next time.